Another case where bail may, may have made all the difference. We are tracking a man now accused of extreme violence against women, potentially spanning four states. New York murder suspect Rod Almansuri remains locked up in Arizona while a battle brews over his extradition. The 26-year-old is accused of killing a 38-year-old woman in a Manhattan hotel room earlier this month, strangling her and beating her with an iron, then wearing her pink leggings. This happened nearly a year after allegedly sexually assaulting a Florida woman, a co-worker. He was arrested and eventually released from jail after posting bail, something the victim says should have never happened. And I had the chance to speak with Leah Palian about what went through her mind when she heard the news last weekend on Prime. Take a listen. Yeah, absolutely. I played out every option um, and really there was no way to get out besides just like coaxing him and calming him down and um, kind of like playing into the fact that he had told me he loved me earlier and I was like, you know, this is a trauma response. Let's get through this. You said you loved me. Like, so I was able to calm him down enough to leave the apartment to think that we were on good terms. But yeah, I was just really like playing every option of trying to stay alive. Yeah, Leah there just describing how she survived that experience, eventually making it to a 7-Eleven bathroom and calling 911. Joining us now is Mark Reichel, criminal defense and civil attorney. Mark, it's good to see you. And I want to jump right in because there is growing concern uh, nationwide that violent suspects are being released on bail and then they are going on to commit other extreme and terrible traumatic acts of violence. We saw it with Lake and Riley. We see it with Leah Palian uh, in Florida. Uh, Leah was trapped and assaulted in her own home, and she told police uh, that her attacker would go on to be the next Ted Bundy. Those are her words. And when freed, her perpetrator allegedly goes on to murder this woman in New York City. What do you make of this? Well, uh, look, every, we all are going to agree that at some point, uh, there should be a national study and there should be a national committee actually to make bail uh, across every state almost like federalized where there's uniform rules on it because bail it's a sliding scale where we do want some people to be released on bail but obviously others not we also really need to make it scientifically studied about how we can prevent those who have been released on bail to have constant monitoring constant checking in and so that there's no possibility that when you break bail in one state you can show up again in another state that that should never happen once you've broken bail where you're released from immediately OK, immediately, all jurisdictions should have federal funding, resources available. And in the big picture, it's not that much money or resources ex or expenses to have something where there's this national, almost like, you know, we have here in California, we have alerts when someone's missing. Same thing when you break parole. Hey, let's find the person because they've left the state. They've left the jurisdiction. They don't, they're disrespecting, disregarding the law. So I think there has to be a real wholesale sit down with real data, real studies about what can be done. I'm, I'm confident America has the resources to solve this because it is becoming an epidemic. Yeah, from what can you, from what you can tell, in Leah Palian's case, who dropped the ball? How did this man end up murdering uh, allegedly another woman in, in New York months later? The individuals that didn't monitor him when he was released in Florida. The minute he's released, there should be, you know, automatic. Look, it's a gift to no longer be in the jail, to, you know, be out to fight your case, to have freedom before your trial. It's a gift. That should come at a cost, which is a lot of monitoring, you know, all sorts of ways to keep an eye on the person so they don't just freely travel to another state and disappear. I mean, a, a, a warrant going out for them to another state doesn't do a whole lot. And here's why. The receiving state, they find somebody there, they've broken parole, there's a warrant out for them for not appearing somewhere other state. You can only hold them so long, so long you can hold them in your jail, space, money, and so forth. The other state has to come get them. And a lot of times, they don't want to spend the money to fly people out to get them. So hold them for five years, days, happens all the time, they release them. The other state doesn't get them, then they can go out and really do something horrendous. In the case of Lake and Riley, what do you think should have happened that could have prevented that crime, could have prevented her death? In that case, you talk, I talked to you briefly a minute ago about getting out on bail being a gift. Well, this is someone paroled into the country who has no right to be here. They were paroled and uh, again into the country and then showed up in another state and then in another state. I'm telling you, there there's the resources there. The minute someone breaks parole, and by that I mean, I'm sorry if that's a term of art, they have violated the terms of their release. Here's You're released, here are your terms. Don't violate these terms. The minute, there should be constant monitoring of those, those terms. The minute you violate them, nationwide alert, 
they're they're put in custody somewhere, even if it's in New York and they were released in California. This federal resources to get them and bring them back out. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.